Hi, I'm Sarah Tilly from Curious Maths. I'm a primary maths consultant based in London and I've been in education for over 20 years. I'm a massive advocate of children being active mathematicians. I really believe that for children to get the most out of maths, to believe they can be good at maths, they need to be engaged in an activity that interests them, but also one which they can talk to another person about the maths they're seeing and wonder what might happen next and make predictions and disagree and agree, all those types of things. And all of those qualities, all of those opportunities um, enable children to become better mathematicians. So I'm always on the hunt for ideas for games or <laughs> puzzles and things like that. So with that in mind, today I'm going to show you three different games that you can play with dominoes. Dominoes are a great resource, particularly good with younger children because of course of the, the dots makes it countable, but also the pattern replicates that of a dice, so there's quite a lot of connection making there. Um, I use dominoes a lot in school, you can use them at home, uh, whatever you want though, but they're just, just a fantastic resource. So. If you don't have any dominoes, it doesn't mean you can't join it in, so you can download some online. There are plenty of free printables out there, but also you could make your own. So have a go, um, and I hope you enjoy these games. So before we start playing with the dominoes, I just want to say a few things about the set that I'm using today. So as you'll notice, this is a double six set of dominoes. And what that means is the heaviest domino is a double six. And all the patterns range right down to the lightest domino, that is double zero. So because it's a double six set, there are 28 dominoes in this pack. And I think this is a really good size for playing games between two and four people. Right, so as you notice, dominoes are split in half. These are called pips, and these pips represent the value of each of the parts of the domino. Now, something I really like to do with children is rather than just give them a set like this all ready to go, and I'll especially do this with a child who perhaps has played dominoes before, I'm going to take some out. And what I'm going to say to them is that, oh, you can see there are a few missing here. Can you find out which dominoes are missing so we can make them with paper or card? And how are you going to do it? And what's great about this is there's loads of patterns to be found within a set of dominoes. And if a child has played with them more than once, they will start to remember the combinations that are there. So you can do a little investigation. They can set it out, organise them into groups and see which dominoes are missing. And I just think it's a really nice way to start a game of dominoes. Right, let's play. Let's play straight dominoes. So, this is the form of the game that I'm probably most familiar with, certainly in my childhood. Uh, it's a very simple matching game, and the idea of this game is to get rid of all your tiles uh, to be the winner. So, to start off with the game, you need to turn all the dominoes face down, and each player selects seven dominoes. The person to start is the person with the highest double, and as we can see here, I'm lucky enough to have a double six. So what happens now is the next player needs to match. Now luckily they have a six, so they can put a six next to my six and back to me. I can either match with a six or a four. I'm gonna use my four, and I can actually put it in any direction I like. Over to this player and so forth. And you carry on going until you've got rid of all your tiles. Now, if you have a situation where you can't go, um, then you pick up another tile from the set of remaining dominoes, especially if there's less than four people, there will always be some remaining. So the winner is the person who gets rid of all their tiles, and then this is the good bit. So they, their points are scored by the number of pips left from the other opponents. So let's just say this opponent had these dominoes left when I got rid of all mine, then what they'd need to do is add up the pips and I would score it. So we got five, plus two is seven, plus one is eight, nine, 10, 11. So I would score 11 points from that player. 
And obviously, if there were more players, I'd score more. It's a good fun game. Have a go. Time to play Keep or Lose. I like to call this game Keep or Lose because you either keep the domino you've turned over or you lose it. And the winner at the end of the game is the person with the most tiles. Now this is a rule-based game and if you're a teacher in a class you may like to do some preparation with children first and generate some rules which might be used in the game. Or, if you wanted it to flow a little bit quicker, you could possibly write the rules yourself. And actually, just before this video, I have put a suggested list of rules that you could use. Now, before anyone picks up their first tile, we need to establish a rule. So, here are ones I've made earlier. This is the first rule. So everybody understands that the pips must total an even number, and you can have a conversation about what that must mean. Now, if I'm going to turn over my first domino, oh dear. The rule is the pips must total an even number and I've only got one pip so I do not keep that tile. And then it goes on to the next person, it goes all the way round for this rule. Once everyone's had a go, you can generate another rule. One side must be dub double the other side, pick a tile, see if it works and so forth. So every time your domino doesn't match the rule, you lose it. Every time your domino does, you keep it. Um, what I do like to do is if I decide to do rules written already, I like to put a couple of these in. And this is an opportunity for the children or the players you're playing with to have to think on their feet and decide a rule that hasn't already been set. So, it's a really fun game. Uh, have a little go. I'd love to know what you think. Domino game three, race to zero. Now this game is already quite popular in schools. I've been talking to teachers about it for years, but usually when I demonstrate it, I'm using base 10 or Deans or, or perhaps Numicon. So I thought I'd try it today with dominoes. So the idea of this game is that you've got to try and get as close to zero as you can. For this example, we're going to start with 100 and players are going to take two dominoes and add them together and subtract them from 100. And you keep going until all of the dominoes have been collected and then you see who is closest to zero and that person wins a point. So, quick example because there's so much maths it, it, I can really show it to you if I use an example. So, let's just say I turned these two over. Now straight away we can see lots of patterns and it's very interesting watching children and seeing how they calculate. So, does the child see the double six and calculate that first? Does the child see the ten? and add from there. Does the child calculate just by counting the pips? What do they do? So anyway, I've got a total of 19. So what I'm going to do now is take it from 100. Now, the challenge is here. We've got two zeros and 100. So this first question sometimes is quite tricky for children. So you could consider using a Numicon 100 number line. Um, you could use Numicon shapes to help with that and you could take them away or take the pegs out of the shapes away. You could use something like one of these digit flips so you could make a hundred and subtract it away. Some children find that really useful. It could be that your child would like to use a number line or a hundred square or it could be that they go for column. Whatever they do they just need to subtract the sum of these two dominoes from hundred and so on. So the next player takes takes two dominoes and does the same thing. So it's a really, really great game. When all those dominoes have been taken, you see who's closest, but there's so much maths involved. And what I really like about it too is it's so adaptable. So I just did a, a quite simple example really of counting back from 100, but of course you could flip it the other way. It could be a race to 100. So instead of subtracting, 
you're adding the sum of the two dominoes. You could increase the number of dominoes that you want your child or your group in your class to take away. You could multiply. So you could find the sum here, 9, the sum here, 10, multiply those together, which would give you 90, and take it away from the value. Now I think you probably need to start with a higher number value for that. You could turn them into fractions. So maybe start with 10 as your whole number, and you've got 3 sixths and 4 sixths. Now, to be able to do these types of questions, your child would need to be able to add different denominators. I've got the same here, but it's not always going to happen like that. So add different denominators, understand mixed numbers it is a little bit more challenging, but really good fun. So why not have a go?